right? Okay, so the last thing we discussed was resistance thermometer. So anybody would like to give me, any, anybody would like to give me a recap of whatever you remember, what was resistance thermometer? Let's just start with resistance thermometer because I did it real quick as we were running out of time. So anybody wants to give me a real a quick recap on resistance thermometer, what they understand by it? As the name suggests, yes, Lusra, good job. Yes, yes. The resistance thermometer, it, uh, it basically makes use of the increase in electrical resistance of platinum with increase in temperature. Very good job, Yusra. Looks like you have prepared. Yes, good job. Yes, I like that. Uh, if you guys prepare before attending the class, I'm telling you uh, it will be useful for you. Okay. Um, yes. So resistance thermometer, as the name suggests, make you, makes use of resistance. Uh, and we usually use platinum metal because I discussed yesterday that it was a stable meaning, stable meaning that it, uh, it will stay a solid uh, at a, a wide range of temperatures which we are trying to measure. And it is also unreactive, so it wouldn't react with the atmospheric substances and therefore would not uh, affect our measurements of temperature. That is why, and it is, it can be drawn into fine wires uh, while it is not too soft like uh, mercury, right? But the problem with, because you see, we are humans, we cannot be perfect, right? So these instruments are not perfect, okay? They're made by humans. So uh, uh, every instrument has some advantages and some disadvantages. We have to keep in mind their advantages and disadvantages. And uh, our choice of instrument will depend upon the purpose we are using those instruments for, okay? So, and, and most of the, uh, yesterday, yesterday somebody was asking me, can you please mute yourself? Yesterday, somebody was asking me what sort of questions we might get regarding thermometers. And I pulled out a few questions today for you guys. And I noticed that most of the questions are regarding the use and how you choose which instrument to use for which purpose. So for that, you have to keep their advantages and disadvantages in mind. You have to keep the ranges of temperature that they are used for in mind. That will determine uh, what you, what in, uh, what thermometer should you use for what? Okay. So now I will bring you to the video to my, yeah. Okay. So I, uh, so as the temperature increases, resistance increases because platinum is a metal. Why was the resistance increasing with the temperature? Does anybody remember? Why was the resistance increasing of the metal with the temperature? Yes, good job, Ibrahim. Good job. Okay, Ibrahim, can you please tell me why the uh, resistance of platinum increasing with increase in temperature? Only Yusra is answering. I like that. Yes, Yusra? Okay, Ibrahim. Okay, I'm giving Ibrahim a chance. Yes, Ibrahim? There is increases because the uh, electrons get really charged up so they move faster but the metal lines which are embedded in the sea of electrons right. they all they also move uh, they vibrate vigorously so they are right. constricting the way of the electrons so the resistance increases good job ibrahim i'm proud of you yes good job i'm glad that you remember i'm so glad Yes, when the cations, because they are larger in size uh, compared to electrons, they are really big. So when they also start vibrating, they come in the way of electrons and therefore electrons cannot freely move as they would move otherwise, right? So conductivity of metals decreases for that reason, right? Now, as the, uh, please do not share your screen, kindly do not share your screen. Who is sharing a screen? 
who is sharing a screen please do not share a screen i'm i i will be the only one sharing a screen you can share faris najmi can you please stop sharing i don't know how to faris najmi who is this okay let me because you see that this this wastes our time please do not share your screen okay okay so as the resistance increases with temperature applying this formula we know as the resistance increases the voltage also increases okay voltage i told you is the difference it is the difference of energy that the electrons have at any two points the difference in the energy uh, possessed by the electrons at any two points that is called voltage which is measured by the voltmeter okay so as the temperature increases resistance increases which is then detected by the voltmeter and that is then translated as the corresponding temperature right i hope that's making sense so this was resistance thermometer the problem with this resistance thermometer its disadvantage was that it was really bulky because remember uh more the length of uh, a conductor higher the resistance okay lengthier a conductor more the resistance okay like longer the road more the distance you have to travel to get somewhere right so resistance is the difficulty to get some some at some point so long, more the length more the resistance okay so we have to use a really long piece of platinum so that resistance is enough for us to be measured so that the changes in resistance are enough for us to be measured the change in length and the change in resistance should be measurable okay because of which that makes the resistance thermometer bulky and we cannot take uh, you know we, the handling becomes more inconvenient right and of course again it is suitable for steady temperatures meaning it is not suitable for rapidly changing temperatures why because rapidly changing because you know it needs time for expansion increase in length and change in resistance and all of that so it is suitable for temperatures which are steady meaning like uh, they will stay constant for longer periods of time okay even if there is change the change will be slow okay so that is these are the two disadvantages of using resistance thermometer the advantages are that it has a wide range it has a wide range because platinum is a metal uh therefore it's boiling i mean it's melting points uh, point is really high that is, that gives us the wide range of uh temperatures which can be measured and it is accurate meaning it represents the change very accurately uh close to the actual temperature and it is usually measured in industries why because in industries you deal with temperatures above 1000 above 1000 degree celsius in industries where you use uh, electricity and you deal with really high temperatures so resistance thermometer remember good for steady temperature industries wide range Re remember these major points okay this will help you in choosing uh, the thermometers now let's come to thermistor now thermistor is in some ways similar to resistance thermometer in other ways it is just the opposite of resistance thermometer it is similar in the fact that we are using again the same physical property which is the resistance okay and we are studying the variation of resistance along with temperature so in that respect it is similar to resistance thermometer but the relationship is just the opposite okay in resistance thermometer as, as the temperature was rising the resistance was increasing as well okay remember because the cations were uh, vibrating and they were getting in the ways of electron and all of that metal we were using metal here but here in thermistor we are not using a metal but 
semiconductors. Yeah, now this is a new thing. Okay, I if you guys if you guys are finding this difficult, I can just uh, quit here. I mean, I will not explain you. I will not go into the details. You can just remember. Again, this is that this will then become ratification. Okay, as the temperature is increasing, resistance will decrease. Now, why for that you have to get to the structure semiconductors. So for those of you who don't mind getting into the details, I will tell the details. For those who don't want to go into the details, they will just take facts for granted. Yes, Hala, good job. Semiconductors are metalloid. So I'm going to discuss them, okay, for now, for those who are interested. Okay, Kuzama, we will come to those questions, okay? Let me just explain this first. Let me just... Uh, explain this thermistor first, okay? I'm sharing my screen. I wanna show you structure of semiconductor, okay? Okay. Okay. Yes. Now, yes, you are right, Hala. Semiconductors are metalloids. Now, what are metalloids? Remember that staircase of periodic table that I shaded for you in the chemistry class? That, that metalloid thing, I hope you guys remember, I won't have to show you again because I don't have a picture of periodic table right now with me. So if you can remember that a staircase of metalloid, silicon was one of them. Now these metalloids, why, why are they called metalloids? It's because some of their properties are like metals and, and other properties are like non-metals. So remember this. At lower temperatures, they behave as metals. And at higher temperatures, they start behaving as non-metals, okay? That is why they are in between, they in the periodic table, they are arranged between metals and non-metals. And that is why they are called metalloids, okay? Now the silicon, now silicon is in the same group as carbon, okay? It has four valence electrons, each atom, has four valence electrons because it is in the fourth group, okay? Now, uh, it, at, at lower temperatures, it will behave just like uh, diamond, just like carbon, okay? Carbon carbons bonded to four other carbon atoms, simple. But at higher temperatures, one of its electrons will get free. One of its electrons will get free of the bond, okay? Now, how many per atom that I don't know, that, that I don't remember right now, but yes, few electrons get free. And as they are free, they are available for conduction. Okay, they are available for conduction, making this a semiconductor, meaning that it is conducting at higher temperatures, but not conducting at lower temperatures. Do you get me? Okay. So that is why, because we are using semiconductors, the, the conductivity will increase as we are increasing the temperature. And as conductivity increases, meaning resistance will decrease, meaning that if you increase the temperature, the resistance will decrease, right? Tem I'm repeating myself. As the temperature increases, the resistance will decrease, why? Because now electrons are available for conduction. So that means conductivity increased. When conductivity increase, the resistance decreases, right? Because more electrons at higher temperature, electrons are available for conduction in case of semiconductors. Whereas in metals, it was the other way around uh, and that was due to metals structure. So see here, knowing the structure is important. For me, it's important. Some people say, oh, you're confusing, you're going into too, too much detail. Well, if you don't like the details, it's fine. I don't know how then otherwise we will remember this. So this helps me in remembering. So I know thermistor uh, is made up of, okay, uh, semiconductors and so they're, So thermistor, 
is made up of semiconductors and as the temperature increases, resistance decreases and therefore the voltage decreases. When the resistance will decrease, the voltage will decrease, right? So as the temperature increases, voltage decreases, okay? Now, I have compared thermistors with resistance thermometers, okay? Thermistors are more accurate. Thermistors are more accurate. Thermistor is this, semiconductors. By the way, semiconductors, silicon, it is used in all the electronic devices, you know? All these um, computer chips have this silicon, okay? That's why the biggest computer uh, industry in California is called Silicon Valley, right? You must have heard of it. So thermistors are more accurate due to semiconductors. Now response time is faster of thermistors. That's why, that's why thermistors got more popular because of these advantages. But the temperature range is smaller, minus 60 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius. Hmm. Now, why is that? That I don't know. Why is the, okay, but it has better sensitivity. It has a small size that makes it handy. And it, because of this small range, I think it is used for measuring temperature of home alliances, appliances only. Okay, measuring temperature of home appliances only. Okay, by the way, when it is used in computers, it is not used as a thermistor. It is used for other, for circuits, okay? Uh, I have to, I'm interested in finding out why is the temperature range is smaller? Why do you think, can you think of a reason? Why would the temperature range be smaller? Because uh, the temperature is increasing, resistance is decreasing, and so, hmm. Okay, I'll find out. Yeah, you know, think with me. Think with me. You have to be thinkers, okay? Get your mind to think. Okay, we'll, we'll find this out. Okay, we'll find this out. I'm gonna mark this, you mark this as well. Because of silicon conductivity? Hmm. Hmm, no, I'm still confused a little. Why is the temperature range is small? Because, okay, I don't know. Now let's move on, we'll find out. Okay, let's move on to constant volume gas thermometer. Constant volume gas thermometer. Now this would have been easier to understand and for me to explain if you guys had done gas laws. This is a, you know, this is making use of a gas law, but we haven't done. So I'll have to give you a little background knowledge. Now, as the name suggests, the volume is constant, okay? Volume is constant. Let me figure 18.3, page 77. Take out page 77 for us. Okay, I'm sorry, my, somebody drew a cartoon on my diagram. So excuse the cartoon. <laughs> okay, so um, this is, uh, this is a round bottom flask and this has gas in it and this is thermometer, okay? As you can see, the volume is constant, meaning uh, uh, there is, the apparatus is not allowing for the gas to expand or anything, okay? And they are increasing the temperature by warming this water. So the volume of the gas is constant. The volume of gas is constant and the temperature is increasing, okay? So we are keeping the volume constant, but the temperature is increasing. So if the volume is constant, provided volume is constant, as the temperature increases, the pressure increases. Okay, when temperature increases, pressure increases. This symbol means like it is proportional, related to. This means related to or proportional. So temperature is directly related to pressure. Why? As is common sense, if the volume is constant, meaning the gas is not given, the gas molecules are not given more space, as you are increasing the temperature, you are increasing the kinetic energy of the molecules, 
and therefore they are hitting against the walls of the container with greater force and therefore applying greater force per unit area on the walls of the container and therefore greater pressure. So that's common sense, right? That's un un understandable. But if the volume, now why is the volume kept constant? If the volume is kept con is, is not constant and if the volume is allowed to expand, then of course, instead of hitting against the walls of the container, it will go ahead and occupy more space. And then you won't be able to detect that increase in pressure. In fact, you will uh, see increase in volume because the, uh, the molecules, since they are less dense, I mean, they are light and they will try to occupy more space. If you allow them more space, they will go ahead and the gas will expand, right? So that is why the volume is kept constant so that the increase in kinetic energy will result in increase in pressure. And that pressure is then detected by this gauge. This is called a pressure gauge. So uh, the pressure can be measured with the help of this gauge. So as the temperature is rising, the pressure is increasing. So we are using this physical property, which is the uh, pressure of the gas, to represent the increase in temperature. The increase in pressure is being used as a, represent a representative of the increase in temperature. Okay, I hope this made sense. So that is why this makes use of the pressure of gas. So as the temperature increases, the pressure of gas increases. Okay, provided, provided you should uh, stay below, no, you should stay away from the condensation temperature of the gas, meaning the gas should not turn into a liquid. Okay, I am on page 77, Nabil, uh, on page 77, gas laws. Okay. So, uh, uh, because at condensation point, the gas will turn into a liquid and this behavior will, uh, will not be there then. Liquids behave differently, right? You can have this pressure gauge measuring the pressure only for as long as the substance is in, in, in gaseous state. So you should stay away from its condensation point, okay, from the condensation point of the gas. Now, disadvantage is very, you know, understandable, you can see how bulky this is. Now, when I say bulky, compare the size of this instrument to the digital thermometer that you're using in the hospitals these days. See how handy and small it is. You can easily carry it with you, keep it in your purse, okay? Keep it in your even pocket if you have to. So it's, you know, it's, it's handling is easier. Now this is bulky, okay? This is bulky. You, handling is difficult. Okay, carrying it along is difficult. But the good points are that again, it has a wide range. Okay, I don't know the exact range. Have I written the exact range somewhere? It has a wide range and it is accurate, meaning it is representing the change precisely. Uh, yeah, okay, the constant volume gas thermometers range depends upon the gas you're using. So it will depend upon the condensation point. By the way, condensation point is the same as boiling point. It is the same as boiling point, remember? Yeah, I hope you remember. Uh, so if you do not remember, then let me know. Okay, then the last thermometer your book is talking about is thermochromic liquids. Thermochromic liquids, as the name suggests, thermo, thermal, from thermal energy, and chromic means color. Remember chromium, I told you, it's called chromium because it gives us brightly colored solutions in different oxidation states. So yeah, this liquid gives us, gives different colors according to temperature. So which physical property are we making use of? The change in color. We are making use of the change in color in response to change in temperature. That's why they're called thermochromic liquids. And they are used these days for, and they're used this way. I'm gonna share my screen. This, this is a thermochromic thermometer. Now, according to the body temperature, the thermometer will give you the color, okay? At 35, it's giving dark blue, at 36, light green, at 37, brown, 38, black, and so on and so forth, okay? 
So this is a thermochromic liquid. Now, okay. Okay, and now I will take questions from you guys. I have almost, almost finished the chapter. I mean, I've done the explanation part, but of course that does not mean that we are done with the chapter. We still have questions to do and I will take your questions now. Mm. Oh, you have done gas laws? You have done gas laws. Okay, good job. Then you uh, would have understood this better, huh? Oh, okay. Okay, because temperature increases, okay, resistance, okay. Uh, where is this kind of thermometer used? Which type of thermo thermometer are you talking about? Thermochromic. It's uh, used for measuring body temperature in clinics. Is this why in a pressure cooker it gets hotter and expand? Yes, Ibrahim. Yes, exactly. In the pressure cooker, you have uh, sealed the lid airtight. Like you have, the, the lid is airtight in a pressure cooker. So that means you are not allowing the volume to, of the gas to increase, but you are providing heat at the bottom because it's getting heated, right? It's on the stove. Now you are increasing the temperature, but the volume is not increasing. So therefore the pressure is increasing because the molecules are hitting against the walls of the container with a greater force. So greater pressure. That's why it is very dangerous to un uncover the lid of pressure cooker. You, there's a, a small nozzle at the top of the lid. You have to uncover it, let the steam get out so that the pressure within the container drops down. And once the steam has stopped coming out, then you can safely and easily uh, open the cooker, okay? Okay, is it just a paper or there? No, there are, there are liquid strips on that thermochromic uh, paper. And now you will ask me why do they change their color, colors and all of that. Don't have to get into details. Remember, colors of substance have to do with the light they reflect. Okay, so we will have to go into light if you want, if you'll go into details. I, okay, I'm not going into details. How is the increase in pressure on the gauge used to represent temperature? Yes, Haya, see, we are only discussing the basic principle uh, working uh, behind these thermometers. Okay, we are not studying the exact structure of thermometers. Now, I have only explained you the basic principle, like how have they, um, like how is the pressure related to temperature? Now, how do they tra translate that into temperature that they have not discussed, okay? So that I will not go into, okay? Why is a steam born more harmful than hot water? Will we use a resistance thermometer or, th or a thermocouple thermometer for, a, for an object with 800 degrees Celsius? Okay, Arham, that's a lot of information. Okay, uh, you know what? Stick to knowledge and information that you can handle. Okay, if you can handle this much, good for you. Okay, good job. Okay, Sayyid Nabil, my question. What was your question? How does thermometer, how does thermometer work? Any principle? I did not get this question. Do, do you mean to say this gas law? Yeah, this is another chapter, gas law, but we had to know this to be able to understand uh, the constant volume gas thermometer. That's why. Okay. Uh, we'll, okay. Uh, Hosema, we will discuss the ranges and the thermometers in a bit. Okay. Uh, Yusra, can you please, uh, I, I'll, I'll unmute you because I am not getting your question. Okay, I'll unmute you and you tell me uh, what is what is that question you want to ask me? Yes, Yusra. Yes. Ma'am, my question is that where is constant volume gas thermometer used? Oh, where is it used? Yeah, yes. uh, I don't know. 
okay i i don't know where is this i cannot think of it right now but we can look into it okay we can look into it and we can find out okay now um that is a good question i want i also wanted to go into that uh somebody asked me ibrahim asked this question why is a steam burn more harmful than hot water can anybody answer this will we use a resistance thermometer oh uh, sorry why is a steam burn more harmful than hot water can anybody answer this can anybody answer this why is a steam more harmful than hot water no i cannot see any hands raised arham good job wait because the gas particles are small because the steam has more energetic molecules than water yes usman aslam we will do past papers today yes okay first we will do end of chapter questions okay uh, uh, arham okay i'll let you yes ma'am yeah, ma'am because uh, steam hot steam uh, ha steam has more energy and it, the latent heat of, heat heat of vaporization is more so when it when it hits your body it, it damages your skin more than hot water will at once good job yes good job okay what okay what do you mean by latent heat ma'am it's like uh, it's like more energetic can you elaborate a little more on latent heat okay uh, who who else wants to contribute i saw a few raised hands but they lo got lowered yes hala yes yes um uh, this is because the the steam has as more hot and uh, particles which are moving with more kinetic energy than the one with the hot water okay that is one point and okay sayed nabil yes yeah, uh, steam will produce more severe burns than boiling water because steam has more high heat energy than water due to its latent heat of vaporization steam and boiling water can exist but it only correct uh, correct to assume here but that both are same temperature okay you know what all of you are correct all of you are correct okay but let me add to this okay let me add to this okay let me add to this now when you are increasing like in hot water in hot water you have let me start my video see in hot water yeah in hot water you have really energetic molecules okay you have really energetic molecules they are you know vibrating here and there right they are really really they are really in in a lot of motion okay they are dancing here and there they're jumping okay they're jumping they have a lot of kinetic energy okay this is hot water okay and now steam is or the molecules which are right above the liquid which have just gotten out of the liquid surface okay now i have made this model for you guys now when these two balls uh, i'm sorry my my atoms are unequal okay but just imagine if they were same okay now when the atoms now these two are atoms these two balls are atoms okay now when these two balls are touching each other this is like solid arrangement right this is so, solid arrangement now in the liquid arrangement they will move farther away from each other as you can see the distance between them increased right now this elastic band is like the forces of attraction between them this elastic band which i have wound around them is the force of attraction between them right now as i am pulling them farther apart you can see that the distance between them is increasing but also is the tension in the band 
the tension in the band is also increasing. Can you see? Now, if I keep pulling them, keep pulling them, keep pulling them, keep pulling them, you can see that the tension in the elastic band is increasing the farther I'm pulling them away from each other. A point will come when this elastic band will snap, it will break. And so these molecules will no longer be attached and they will go as far away as is possible. There will be no elastic band between them to bring them back. Okay, so now what happens is that when this, when this process is going on, as I am providing energy, thermal energy, I'm providing heat. So the distance between them is increasing while the forces of attraction, this elastic band is still intact. For as long as these molecules are in the liquid state, this elastic band or force of attraction between the molecules will keep bringing them back together, will try to bring them back, back together. What is this tension? What sort of energy is the tension in the elastic band? What sort of energy is it? Elastic potential energy, remember? This is potential energy. So as in the molecule state, uh, sorry, in the liquid state, as I am pulling the molecules away from each other, I am not only increasing their kinetic energy, but what am I doing? I'm also increasing the potential energy. The forces of attraction behave just like this elastic band, just like this elastic band. They might not look like them, but they behave just like this. Like as you are pulling the molecules farther apart, you are increasing the kinetic as well as the potential energy. Potential, same as this elastic potential energy, meaning that the strain or the tension in this force of attraction will increase, will try to bring them back together again. Now, at this point, if I leave this ball, this elastic band will recoil and, the, and the, these balls will snap together again. So same is the case with the forces of attraction. If it has not gone into the gaseous state, if I remove this, they will get back because this is what the force of attraction is trying to bring them close together. So the thing is that as right before leaving the liquid, liquid into the gas, right at that point, what's happening? This is snapping, this is a snapping away, breaking, okay? And now they have gone into the gaseous state. Gaseous state is when they have no force of attraction, no elastic band, no force of attraction between them. So snapping away. So that is why, remember, temperature was average kinetic energy. Temperature was, remember yesterday, temperature is average kinetic energy. But at the change of a state, at the, when, the, when the state is changing, the energy that we are providing is increasing the potential energy, not the kinetic energy. That is why the whole body of water will stay at 100 degrees Celsius until all the water has converted into gaseous state. Did you understand that? Because after they, the whole body has reached 100 degrees Celsius, what happens is if you keep providing heat, that heat will not raise the kinetic energy because now that energy is being used to increase the potential energy. Hold this camera again. Because at the end, if you remember, if you even in this, in this example, in this model that I have made, just before the point of breaking, just before the point of breaking, can you see that my balls, if I really want to snap away this elastic band, my balls have to stop for a while and just pull. They cannot be moving this way. They have to stop moving. So kinetic energy is the same. Kinetic energy is the same, but they are pulling. And so potential energy is increasing so much, so much, so much, so that it will snap, okay? This elastic band is real good. It's not snapping. So, so, uh, so the, so the thing is that these molecules, they have that kinetic energy and they have potential energy. That's why the total energy is greater. These have only kinetic energy. That's why they are more dangerous. You know, the latent heat that we talk about is this additional potential energy. 
this is what the thermometer cannot measure. Thermometer cannot measure this potential energy. Thermometer can only measure this average kinetic energy, which is temperature. Okay, the thermometer cannot measure this. That is why when, a, when water is boiling, you are continuously heating, but the thermometer bulb, the sorry, the thermometer mercury level will stay at 100 degrees Celsius. It will stay at 100 degrees Celsius. Did you understand this? And this is what we mean by latent heat. Now, once the mercury has hit 100 degrees Celsius, you keep on heating, but the temperature stays at 100 degrees Celsius, then where is the energy going? You know, the mercury ha has been stuck at 100 degrees Celsius, but you are continuously providing heat. So where is the energy going? That energy is the latent heat. That energy is the latent heat. It is used to increase the potential energy. It is used to pull out of the attractive forces from the neighboring molecules to work against the air molecules to rise up. That is all potential energy. I hope you got my point. I hope you got my point. Did you guys get my point? That is why steam molecules have total, total internal energy of a steam is greater than the total internal energy of liquid molecules. Okay, that is why they are more dangerous. Okay, I hope you got my point. Okay, this was really, really important to understand. Ibrahim, thank you for asking that question. Um, and other, another question that I would like to ask you guys. I would like, after understanding this concept, I would like to ask you something. This is one pot, okay, and this is another pot, okay? Now, this pot is filled with water till here, and this pot is filled with water till here. Both of them are on fire. I'm providing heat. And both of them are boiling. These are bubbles, okay? Both of them are boiling. And I am using a thermometer, okay? I'm using thermometer. Now tell me, what is the temperature of each and why? Boiling, both are boiling. One is bigger, other is very small. Yes, Hala, both of them are 100 degrees Celsius. Yes, Samya, 100, 100, very good, because boiling point, right? Both are water, yes, good job. But now tell me, what about thermal energy? What about thermal energy? Which will have greater thermal energy? Which first one? Don't say first, second, say bigger, smaller. Thermal energy, which will have thermal energy? Yes, Hala, you are right. Thermal energy is bigger for uh, is higher for bigger pot. Yes, Hania, bigger pot should have ha uh, greater thermal energy. Yes, yes, Atika. Now, why? 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 Why is thermal energy greater in a bigger pot? Yes. Let's see. More molecules, yes, more molecules, more molecules. Yes, good job. Remember yesterday, I more particles to absorb the energy because large surface area. Remember this? Uh, this, this, this. Remember this that I showed you? Okay, remember this? Okay. Uh, can you see the thermal energy was the sum of kinetic and potential energy of all the molecules, right? It was just the sum, simple sum. So if you, in a bigger part, there are more molecules, more molecules, therefore a greater sum. Small molecules, smaller sum, right? That's easy to understand. But then the average kinetic energy, which is the temperature is the same. Now I have made another model to make things easier for you. For example, this is the smaller pot with only six molecules. This is a bigger object with, with nine molecules. Now, okay, 
now uh, at the top i've written kinetic energy at the bottom potential energy okay so when i am adding when i am calculating the thermal energy i am adding both because total sum of both kinetic and potential so when i added them i got 31 joules here when i added i got 37 joules so can you see thermal energy is greater for the bigger pot the thermal energy is greater for the bigger pot compared to the smaller pot but the average kinetic energy is the same 2.8 2.8 when i added their kinetic energies and i divided them by the number of molecules i got the same number why because of course when you are calculating average you are dividing the total by the number of molecules the number of molecules is here so maybe you have a uh you have a smaller total but you are also dividing by a smaller number here you have a greater total but you are also dividing by a greater number so compensate they get compensated and overall the temperature is the same of smaller and greater average kinetic energy is the same okay so that was that and then let me see what other point okay now let's start okay i have made this list of the ranges of temperature for thermometers so that it helps us in solving pass papers i can share i mean you you can also make it on your own i got this from the book okay no need to worry about this okay let's do the questions at the end yes yes of course i will send yusra okay let's start with the questions okay so much explanation that i we have only 15 minutes left okay um from the above list of temperatures choose the most likely value for each of the following i am on page 87 i am attempting the end of chapter questions okay uh from the above list of temperatures choose the most likely value for each of the following the melting point of iron now remember iron is a metal so it will have its melting point above 1000 right good job everybody good job yes you are all correct part b the temperature of a room that is comfortably warm easy peasy uh 37 is not considered comfortable okay we from hot countries maybe for us but usually internationally it is around around 25 okay 25 to 20 Okay, twenty-five to twenty. So yes, nine nineteen degrees Celsius is a better option. Okay, the melting point of pure ice at normal pressure. That's easy, zero degrees Celsius. Okay, good job. Everybody knows now. Let's move on. The lowest outdoor temperature recorded in London in winter. That is, I think, what is it? Uh, I don't know about London. Minus twelve. that's what they're saying minus 12 okay whatever let's move on <laughs> yeah same here for zema i haven't been to london ever so i don't know e the normal body temperature of a healthy person this we know 37 okay let's move on question number 2 in order to make a mercury thermometer that will measure small changes in temperature accurately so what do they want they want accuracy and they want sensitivity would you decrease the volume of the mercury bulb no if you decrease the volume of the mercury bulb you are decreasing the sensitivity meaning less mercury uh, exposed to the surrounding temperature put the degree markings further apart now remember if the degree markings are moved further apart the sensitivity will decrease the accuracy will decrease sorry not sensitivity the accuracy will decrease like you know you wouldn't know where where in the in between the markings okay so a scale which has very wide markings is a bad scale a good scale is where the markings are close together with uh, with each other part c decrease the diameter of the capillary tube yes remember narrower the tube faster will be the rise and fall of the liquid because expansion will cause easy expansion and contraction put the degree markings closer together ha huh. put the degree markings closer together well that will increase the accuracy why 
okay leave the capillary tube open to the air no not open to the air because uh, that will then uh, the atmospheric pressure will not allow will not allow the mercury to rise okay now decreasing the diameter of the capillary tube see by decreasing the diameter of the capillary tube you are making the thermometer more sensitive because even slight expansion or contraction will move the mercury farther up farther up and therefore uh, the change in volume of the mercury will uh, depict the temperature change more accurately and the response time will be less meaning response will be faster okay now in order to make a mercury thermometer that will measure small changes in temperature accurately you know what even degree markings closer together should help oh i don't know small changes small changes in temperature accurately d should also be correct i don't know i don't know why d is not correct but you see we have to choose one option and we have to choose the best option okay so no teacher this is not that type of question this is mcq <laughs> answer is c okay okay no turn i mean to 1 mm okay question number 3 how must a property behave to measure temperature okay who's going to answer this how must a property behave to measure temperature this question number 3a i discussed this in the beginning it should change with temperature is that it yes maruj uh, yes that your answer is better it should change continuously with temperature meaning uniformly and continuously what do i mean by uniformly i know uniformly is not written in the back at the back of the book but i would like to add a uniformly as well you know why what does it mean what does uniformly mean what does uniform mean it should change uniformly can anybody tell me uh, the meaning of the word uniform as it is used in science uniform yes hala you are close yes constantly meaning yes equally equally like for example you know if something is expanding less at lower temperatures and then expanding a lot at higher temperatures that will not be a good thermometer that will not be a good thermometer because the expansion is not linear meaning expansion is not uh, regular it is not uniform so the expansion should be uniform with each uh, degree celsius rise in temperature over a wide range okay so that the uh, measurement is accurate did you understand yes equally constantly yes good job name three properties that qualify yes the, uh, we used volume of a liquid resistance pressure of gas okay color okay and what else yes resistance color volume no not volume uh, yes volume and then pressure yes yes good job okay um uh, name a suitable thermometer for measuring a steady temperature of 1000 degrees celsius steady kiske sath hum aaya tha naam remember kis kis ke sath aaya tha steady with uh, resistance resistance thermometer yes arham platinum resistance yes resistance for thermocouple uh, thermocouples okay let me see what was thermocouple it was sensitive rapidly changing temperature of a small objects rapidly changing no thermocouple is for rapidly changing beta not for steady temperature for a steady temperature it was a uh, resistance thermometer because platinum's length is longer right so it takes time for expansion and for resistance to change that is why a resistance thermometer the changing temperature of a small object for small objects we have thermocouple yes for small objects we have thermocouples yeah for small objects thermocouple 
you know, for now, for now, I have made these, you know, I have written down their advantages and disadvantages. So I'm just looking here. See steady temperature. So I saw steady temperature resistance thermometer. And then for small objects, I wrote down here small objects for thermocouple. Okay. So you should be convinced. You should know them, right? You should know why's behind them. And then, uh, you know, by, by uh, solving questions again and again and again and, and referring to these points again and again, you will remember them. Okay. Without ratification, you will remember them, inshallah. Okay, a winter temperature at the North Pole, winter temperature at the North Pole, meaning really a range which includes range which includes really uh, low temperatures. Alcohol thermometer? Yes, yes, alcohol thermometer. Yes, for low temperatures, it is alcohol. Okay, describe the main features of a clinical thermometer. Who will do this real quick one one words it is it is use the chat window uh describe the main features of a clinical thermometer real quick real quick real quick no no beta no no beta no 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 main features main features meaning like yeah, you will talk about that it is first of all mercury in glass, okay? The range is few degrees uh, above and below the body temperature. You will talk about constriction, okay? You will talk about the narrow capillary tube and that's that, okay? And then I think you'll be, you'll be good. Yes, okay? So three to four uh, important points. Three to four important points, okay? Okay, let's move on to few past papers, okay? Let's move on. I am sharing my screen. Um, okay. Okay, question number one. Which thermometer is the best for measuring rapidly changing temperatures? Rapidly changing. Ah, who is telling me? Come on, come on, come on. Who is telling me? Yes, yes, chat windows. Good job. Everybody got the hang of it. Very good. Yes, thermocouple. Okay, question number two. Question number two. The temperature shown by a mercury in glass thermometer increases. Which of the following is constant? Temperature shown by mercury in glass thermometer increases. Which of the following is constant? The density of the mercury, the internal energy of the mercury, the mass of the mercury, the volume of the mercury. Hmm. Yes, who is gonna answer? A. A, Ibrahim, you are saying A, Yusra is saying B, Ibrahim is saying C, Samia C. Okay, so tell me why, 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 why? Why, see density, how will the density stay the same? It is expanding, right? Density is mass over volume. So if volume is increasing, the density will decrease. That's why it rises right the mass does not change the internal energy will also change because as you are heating you are increasing the kinetic energy okay and maybe also the potential energy so the internal energy is increasing the volume of the mercury is also increasing because it is expanding okay it is only the mass which will stay constant yes because no more mercury added good job abdullah yes yes okay fuzema is the point clear to you if it is not clear then you please tell me in the chat window say this question number two i did not understand okay then i i will explain that to you now question number three a thermocouple thermometer uses a voltmeter to measure the emf now emf is the same as voltage okay it, it stands for electromotive force and it is used uh, when we're talking about the voltage between the two terminals of a battery Okay, so don't be confused by that. To measure the voltage, okay, generated between two junctions. The junctions are at temperatures T1 and T2. 
to calibrate the thermometer, fixed points are needed. Remember, I discussed fixed points with you, the ice point and the steam point, right? Okay, so we need to calibrate this. So we need to get the its respective ice point and steam point. Now, what are the values? And remember, one junction is colder than the other. Remember, the colder junction is the known temperature. The other junction that we have to measure, the temperature of which we have to measure, should be a little warmer than the known temperature. I hope you guys remember, uh, we discussed the working of thermocouple. What are the values of T1 and T2 when the thermometer is calibrated at the steam point? Steam point. Steam point. What is a steam point? Okay. What is a steam point? First of all, we all know a steam point is 100 degrees Celsius. So which option has 100 degrees Celsius? Yes, Maruj, great. Haya, great. It is B, yes. Nabil, B. Yes, Atika, B. Yes, everybody, yes, B. Now let's move on. Question number four. Okay, ah, yes, sorry. Which instrument is most suitable for measuring a rapidly changing temperature? Rapidly changing. Yes, this is, this is repetition, sorry. This is the same question. Let's move on. Six. Okay, six. A thermocouple thermometer is made from two wires connected to a voltmeter. Which arrangement gives a reading on the voltmeter? Now, one of the wires is copper. What should be the other wire? Now, remember, in a thermocouple, we cannot have two similar wires because if the two wires are the same, that means they have the same conductivity. If they have the same conductivity, no voltage difference between them. If there is no voltage difference, then the voltmeter will not give you any reading. Okay, so we will cut out A and C because they have wire X as copper. We cannot have copper and copper. Cannot have it, okay? So it's either B or D, okay? Now, okay, the thermocouple thermometer. Which arrangement gives a reading on the voltmeter? Uh, a, I'm sorry, B or D? Colder than the hot junction? Same as hot junction. No, the two junctions have to be at different temperatures. The, so the wires have to be different and the two junctions also have to be at different temperature for the voltage to be produced. Remember this, okay? One junction is at a known temperature which will be colder. The other junction will be at a warmer temperature. So it is B, it is B, okay? Are you convinced? Yes, wow, but Arham D is not correct. Arham, why did you say D? Same as hot junction, then both the junctions should, if they are at the same temperature, then the voltage will not be produced. They have to be different conductivities and the junctions have to be at different temperatures. Okay, now, you know what? It would have been so much better if I could unmute you guys at this point, but then if I had unmuted you, you would all be giving me answers at the same time and we are running out of time, so. Okay, let me let us move on. Question number seven. What makes a liquid in glass thermometer sensitive to a small change of temperature? A bulb with a thin glass wall, a shiny liquid in its bore, a stem with a thick glass wall, a very narrow bore. A bulb with a thin glass wall. Why? Yeah, okay, tell me what's your take on this? Option A, option C, option A, no, no way, no, 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 no. Yeah, you know what, not no way, yeah, A is a possible answer, A is a possible answer, a bulb with a thin glass wall, but I think, yeah, you have to be practical about this, if the glass wall is thin and you have to choose the best option. So uh, a thin glass wall might make the glass more delicate, fragile, and therefore there are chances of it breaking. So we will go with the, a very narrow bore. Narrow bore is safe, and it will also uh, be sensitive uh, to a small change of temperature. 
okay you have to choose the best option okay sometimes more than one option looks uh, look uh, correct but out of those you have to choose the best one okay question number 8 question number 8 to calibrate a thermometer without using another thermometer fixed points are required remember fixed points ice points and steam points now which statement is correct any temperatures can be used as fixed points both a lower fixed point and an upper fixed point are required only a lower fixed point is required only an upper fixed point is required now for calibration we need the length between the two fixed points and then we divide that length into 100 equal divisions so yes both lower and upper fixed points are required good job usman good job okay move on uh, if you do not understand just write down that question number or just raise your hand okay question number 9 i i i will i will then uh, uh, explain you at the end question number 9 The diagram shows a clinical thermometer which factor affects the sensitivity of the thermometer the constriction now the constriction is only to uh, keep the mercury there in the capillary tube for a longer period of time so that we can measure it it has nothing to do with sensitivity okay the diameter of the bore yes the diameter affects the sensitivity length of the glass tube the overall length i don't think it affects the sensitivity the thickness of the glass tube maybe but i will go with the diameter okay diameter looks better looks a better option maybe the thickness of the glass tube affects but i will go with the diameter okay did you see how we choose the best option yes 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 bore bore yes diameter of the bore let's go to question number 10 a certain liquid is used in a liquid in glass thermometer it does not expand uniformly with temperature it does not expand uniformly with temperature what effect will this have on the scale of the thermometer it will be non linear it will have a small range the markings will be close together the markings will be far apart yes let's see can you tell the factors which affect sensitivity okay okay i will tell you okay you guys are saying yes haya good job yes 10 is a right yes yes haya you are right amna you are also right it is a non linear yes myra ajwa huzaima yes a is the correct answer what do you mean by non linear Did you guys understand? You want me to show you? Let me show you. Uh let me show you. See by non-linear what they mean is see if you draw a graph of expansion with temperature. Okay for example this is temperature and this is expansion in millimeters let's suppose okay and this is my graph okay now with temperature if the expansion is not linear for example for lower temperatures the the increase is only 1 millimeter per degree celsius okay so my graph will be like this 1 1 degree celsius 1 1 1 right and then beyond 1 let's suppose beyond 1 it is it is now increasing 2 mm okay for each degree celsius so it would be this way okay and then again this way and then so so the you, linear means a straight line originating from zero done in math linear means a straight line originating from zero that's linear when you have a curve this way this way or any other way that is non linear linear means a straight line linear means a straight line okay so that is what they mean by linear so that's that okay good job amna but for those who okay uh okay another 
thing I wanted to share with you. Uh, another question. A girl asked this question from me uh, privately. She asked this question from me and I like that question. And I said, I will discuss with all of you. Let me find that question. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Bear with me. Yes, this question. She asked this question with, uh, from me and I told her that I'll discuss it in the class. A bimetallic strip is made from two metals, brass and inbar. Stuck together, a student clamps the bimetallic strip as shown in figure 5.1 and heats the end. Can you see the diagram? Invar is at the top, brass is at the bottom, and then uh, the student is heating the open end of the bimetallic strip, okay, and the other end is clamped. When the bimetallic strip is heated, the brass expands more than the invar. They have already mentioned it, even if you don't know which one expands more than the other. Invar, by the way, is an alloy and it has least expansion. It has least expansivity of all the known substances. Okay, so just remember that. The bimetallic strip bends. On figure 5.1, sketch the position of the strip after it has been heated. So, of course, we know that the metal which expands more will be at the outer side of the curve. The metal which is uh, expands more will be at the outer side of the curve. So you will show this bimetallic strip bent upwards because we want the brass to be outside of the curve. So you will show the bend upwards. Now, part two, that was easy. Now, part two, suggest how the bimetallic strip may be used to measure temperature, include the idea of fixed points. Now, when they say include the idea of fixed points, meaning that you will not only explain how this bimetallic strip is used to measure the temperature, but you will also talk about the fixed points, which will be we, the, the ones that we have done, ice points and steam points. So can anybody, can anybody attempt to answer this question? You can raise your hand. And yes, I know I have bypassed my time limit and you, if anybody wants to leave, can leave. But I just wanted to discuss this last question. Okay, anybody wants to try on this question? Yes? Yes, Nabil? No, no, sorry, I don't have, have any question, no. No, you don't want to answer this question? Okay. Okay, does anybody want to attend this? Yes, Yehala brass will be out of the curve. Yes, anybody wants to? Okay, because we are running out of time, so let me give you the answer, okay? Uh, how will this now, we know that brass is expanding more than in bars, so it will be at the outside of the curve. So how can we turn this into a thermometer? Think, think, think. Now, this is uh, what I got from a book, okay? I took its picture for you guys. This is called a bimetal thermometer. This is how the bimetallic strip can be used as a thermometer. Now look at this figure three on the right hand side. The bimetal thermometer. Can you see that they have coiled this? They have used a really uh, long length of bimetallic strip and then they have coiled it in this way. And then they, they have this uh, needle or pointer fixed to the center of this coil, okay? And the other end of the pointer is uh, indicating towards the scale, right? Now, as the temperature will increase, brass will expand more than invar. And as the brass will expand more than the invar, it will cause this coil to get coiled even further. And that further coiling will move this pointer along the scale, therefore representing temperature. So now you explain the working of the thermometer with the help of bimetallic strip, but now talk about the fixed points. So you will say that this bimetallic strip should be uh, you know, immersed in maybe melting ice, okay? So that will give you the ice point. So you will immerse this bimetallic strip in the melting ice 
and you will mark the position of the pointer and you will uh, you will mark it as the ice point and then you will remove this bimetallic strip and expose it or immerse it in boiling water okay and then you will see how the position of the pointer changes and then you will mark that new position as your steam point okay now you have the ice point you have the steam point now you will measure the length between the two and you will divide that length into 100 equal parts and so your so one division of that scale will be as long as your answer that you got when you divided the length by 100 okay so that is how you can use a bimetallic thermometer so that would be the answer to that question okay i hope you guys understood and i made sense to you guys okay so this is genius i didn't understand the bimetallic strip thank you amina what didn't you understand yes yes amina amina yes uh, yes uh, what yes when they have, like in fixed points they have two points but how they they have one needle so how does the needle moves see you will immerse the bimetallic strip first in melting ice not the needle not the pointer the bimetallic strip i mean the pointer is also along with it so when the <clears throat> when the bimet when the brass will contract the the whole thing will uncoil a little yeah, according to the temperature okay because of the contraction of brass okay whatever expands more also contracts more so because brass expands more it will contract also more than in bar and as it will contract okay i'm also sharing the picture again i hope i'm still sharing am i sharing so as it will uncoil the yeah as it will uncoil the needle will point towards a position now that position we will mark as our ice point okay then we will take out the bimetallic strip out of the melting ice and we will immerse it in boiling water okay now in boiling water again the brass will expand more than in bar and it will coil further as it will coil further the position of the needle will change accordingly and it will it will point towards a new position that new position again we will mark it as our steam point then we will measure the length between the two points and we will divide that length into 100 equal divisions or parts okay and that is how we will calibrate did it make sense amana did you understand yes times up yes i understand but alhamdulillah i i we managed to discuss the past paper questions right so okay amna did you understand yes amna yes did you understand yes if you did not understand i will send this picture in the group you read it again yourself okay, okay. thank yeah. you okay you're most welcome okay I'm ending the meeting and inshallah next class, which, which will be on Sunday, will be on chemistry, okay, electrolysis of solutions. We will inshallah end the chapter of um, the types of reaction, inshallah, okay, and we will also do end of chapter questions, okay. Jazakallahu khairan for your compliments, Jazakallahu khairan for all your compliments. You are most welcome. So let's just hug a lawyer and for your compliments. I still see you, Shadows in my room. Jazakallah khairan for all your compliments. Usman Aslam. Life triple nine. Usman Aslam.